Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. We have Shaka, we have Craig, and we have Nadem. And Nadem, I will warn you that on last night's edition, Craig Burley was barking like a dog. And Gab also gave us an answer in a concise and short manner. So anything could happen on tonight's show. <laughs> yes, you had to see it. Craig is just to going to copy it. all my answers anyway. Would you copy him barking like a no, dog? No, 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 I won't copy Craig barking like a dog. But all show long, he's been copying all my answers, I've come to realize. Oh, no. That makes him a copycat. Oh, oh okay. Yes. okay, okay. Meow. Oh, good lord. <laughs> <laughs> Craig, first question is for you. Manchester United value Marcus Rashford at more than £120 million amid PSG interest. Could we get a Craig reaction slash rant on this, please? <laughs> if Manchester United get £120 million from Marcus Rashford, they're maybe not as daft as they look. <laughs> Not to say that he's not been a very good player, uh, he's a talented player, he just hasn't played well for a long time, he's lost his confidence and I, I'm sorry but I, I, just don't, I just don't see that happening, I, I think it would be absolutely bonkers for any club to pay that amount of money for him at this moment in time, he's 24, he's going to be 25 in October I believe, just after the start of the season and, he, and, he's, and he's going to have to to prove himself uh, that he can sort of restart his career. So, no, that's that's big money for a guy that's not played well. Nadem, on yesterday's show, Craig said that Rashford should get on the next Eurostar <laughs> as quickly as possible <laughs> and take them up on this <laughs> offer. What did you make of it all? Um, that is an interesting one because you look at the PSG thing and is, is he actually going to play? You know what I mean? He seems like he enjoys his home comforts in Manchester, supports Man United. Obviously, it's a bit of a shambles at the moment. But I think that's one of the things about when a team that's supposed to be good isn't doing well, you always have the belief that you could be the big reason why they come back. And I think when United do eventually rise again, you know, I think that will bring a lot of joy to a lot of people. And I think he's going to be one of them. But, you know, I don't think his French is that good from what I've heard. Uh, I do think his Mancunian accent's pretty good so I don't know I wouldn't jump on a Eurostar just yet but he might not have a choice because if that 120 million pound comes in I think they'll be strapping him in and saying off you go son <laughs> so we'll have to see about that yeah we'll see what happens uh, there Shaka which summer signing has surprised you the most um yeah, I'm sorry, I can't I can't think of what summer signings they've been mm, some of the Barcelona been signings maybe well we have not or oh, just in terms of who signed Maybe or as opposed like, to performances so far, you mean? Right, not performing. Oh, no. Oh, actually, you know what? No, I think it's as to who's signed. Right, who's signed. Um, I don't know. That, that's, that's, that's a good question. I, it's, it's too early for me to see. It's too early. Who's, who's pulled up trees in the first couple of weeks of the season? But what, okay, no, that's let, let's, not let's the question. That. Let's forget that. Let's just think about just looking at the transfer market. What made you go, oh, wow, they've gone there? Um, well, 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 certainly um, I, I never thought we'd be talking about Lewandowski leaving Bayern. If, if that's, that's the angle around it, that kind of uh, unraveled rather quickly towards the back end of, of, of last season. But I, 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 didn't see, I didn't see that, um, I didn't see that going, going that way at all. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think more of the Barcelona signings because they have been so so busy in the transfer window. Um, outside, outside of Aubameyang, which which ones? I, I, again, I'm, I'm I'm not that. You know, just, could, for God's castle. sake, just give an answer I, and I, we I can move on. I can't think of any. I can't think of any. He's been put on the spot, hasn't he? You can't let's, think let's of any because you're a goalie. All right, for Craig. <laughs> After watching the impact Darwin Nunes has had against Fulham when he came on, should he be in the starting lineup for Liverpool against Crystal Palace? Well, I didn't watch the impact that Darwin Nunes had against Fulham when he came on because I was on vacation and I had for that, three and a half I rephrased weeks. that. I was having, yeah, I had time off and I had, I had visitors, family here, so I didn't. I was I switched off, so I don't know. Uh, I think yeah, if you bring in a uh, obviously had an impact was at the Community Shield as well, so uh, it was another game that I didn't see. Uh, but I think if I signed a player like him, uh, I'll put it one way. I don't think City will be trying to bed obviously, and they haven't trying to bed Erling Haaland in slowly. And I don't really think Liverpool should be thinking about doing it with Darwin Nunes either because even though it's early on, 
dropping a couple of points on the first day of the season is not ideal because City are more than capable of putting a raft of wins together and so you need to get him up to speed uh, quickly and get him in the team to get his goals uh, on the board because uh, that's who's going to win games so yeah I'm not sure about last week but I would certainly get him in the team sooner rather than later. All right, given that you know our pundits very well, having worked here a long time, I'm going to give this next one to you. Okay. Listening to Luis Garcia's La Liga predictions last night, start, bench and sell following ESPN FC Bundits based on the level of bias towards their former club. So we're looking at start, bench or sell for the biased pundits among right. our team. Stevie and Liverpool, Frank and Chelsea... And Luis, and anything apart from Madrid. Luis Garcia went for Barca winning the league, and Barca top player and player of the top um, and player of the year. Luis and, and, and Barca, most bias. So I don't know. More than Stevie, yeah, and Liverpool. I, I right. think so. I think so. Stevie Liverpool second, Frank and Chelsea come third. So I don't know how that falls into. So you would by. start Luis Garcia in anything apart from Madrid. You would bench Stevie and Liverpool. And it's uh, Frank and Chelsea. Frank and Chelsea. Frank and Chelsea is the least biased. Of right. Okay. Well, I know who is definitely least biased against Chelsea is Craig Burley. Oh goodness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. He doesn't need to say anything there. All right, Nadem, and I'll come to all of you on this. What are some of your favourite football souvenirs, jerseys, etc., that you own, and are extremely special to you? Uh, souvenirs. Um... I think, to be honest, the whole, say for example, changing shirts and stuff was a really good idea for like the first four or five years of my career. And then for the next 12, it's like, well, I've got too many shirts now, I don't know what to do with them. So I wouldn't necessarily say that's a thing. But the one that I really like the most, which is the most unexpected, is from my one season on loan at Sunderland where I came away with goal of the season. So that little trophy just to the side, like that's that's probably the my best souvenir, I'd say. It was a, it was a nice little year, that one. Oh, that's a nice answer, yeah. I like that. What about you, Craig? I uh, don't really have any. I've got my Scotland uh, my Scotland caps through in the room just next to me here in an old bin bag. Uh, I don't have any tops. Uh, I've got a couple of photos downstairs from playing in the cup finals and stuff, but my Scotland jersey was pinched from the World Cup in France 98. That was all framed. That was, that was the one souvenir that I had with the Scotland jersey with all the players... Uh, had signed it and all the Brazilian pennants and everything was inside it from that opening game in France 98 and, and that got stolen when uh, my house was broken into in Nottingham 15-20 uh, years ago so I haven't really got had anything to replace it so not really sentimental that way that was the one thing that I had that wasn't really of any monetary value to anybody and it's it's gone that's the, they're two good picks, though. It's a shame that obviously Craig lost out with that shirt. But my, can, my, you, can you match those picks? Yeah, well, I hope to. My, my answer is, is an easy one. So when when trying to be able to in the World Cup in 2006, we were sponsored by Adidas, who produced a boot, as it did for everybody, all the teams that they sponsored, in in that in the teams in the teams colours, with a little you know map of of, of the country, etc. So. They did, they did a pair of red for Trial and Tobago, and I got the entire squad to sign mine for me. So I have that. That's my, easily, my favorite momentum. Very nice, nice question as well. All right, here's another bit of a sarcastic one, I think. We can establish that Craig's favorite person is Sebi. We're talking about people on the show. <laughs> for Stevie, it's definitely Stuart Robson and Dan. Who's Nadam's favourite among the pundits? Which pretty much means... <laughs> <laughs> probably who do you argue with? Dan. You get annoyed with the oh, most. Dan. He's, he's always threatening to punch Dan. Argue with. He's always yeah. threatening to punch yeah. Dan. Yeah. It, it would, I know what you're doing, Dan. It, it would, I know where you're going with this. <laughs> yeah, it, it would have to be Dan. Like, it's one of those things where, like, I think he's really good at his job, but he's also really, really annoying. And I think because I'm quite thick-skinned, I can deal with it. But like, if he catches me on a bad day, you know, I might have to fly over to Connecticut and go and say what's up. <laughs> but yeah, I think I'd have to say I'd have to say Dan overall. But he's, he's a really good guy, though. I do like him, but I think he's the one. <sighs> yeah, uh, would that be fair as well, Craig? Your favourite, Sebi, lovely Sebi Salazar. Oh, 
He loves a bit of football in America as well, Craig. He's desperate to go back on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I got on, I got on well with Sebi, but it's just his hot takes. I can't, uh, <laughs> I can't be doing these hot takes. And Shaka gets on well with everybody. I get on well with everybody, Key. He's the glue on ESPN FC. Is that? Is that? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I don't know. Well, whoever Shaka's is, but, on with, it's always a happy, I'm, happy I'm, camp. I'm, I'm yeah. Smiling. Just a good guy. All right, thanks so much for sending your questions in. We'll do it all again tomorrow. Make sure that you do join us tomorrow. Cucurella. ESPN. Cucurella is the most surprising signing. I've just decided. Ah, Cucurella. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.